Roger. Thanks very much indeed, Leanne. Leanne Gerrans there with the latest global news. Now it's time for Bloomberg Green, our weekly deep dive into key issues on climate and how it's changing business, finance and politics. Well, today we're discussing how factory-built housing may help the government here reach its climate goals. We're joined by Joseph Daniels, who's CEO and founder of the modular housing company Atopia Group and an independent advisor to the government on decarbonising housing and construction. Uh, Joseph, welcome to the programme. Thank you so much for joining us today. I believe you're joining us, in fact, from your factory in Cheshire. So um, perhaps just describe what's going on there. What, what can you see? What does it look like? Thank you. So, yeah, thank you very much for having me on. What does it look like at the moment? It looks like a piece of home being built every eight minutes. Um, it's quite a sheet really. Um, what we're doing here at the moment is we are manufacturing what you could refer to as a hyper brick um, that then is put together with some really cool technology um, that allows us to build net zero housing. We ship them anywhere. We set up offices in the USA recently, in the Middle East. We built in Africa in 2019 and we're continuing to support the government on its green housing needs uh, as we speak and it's all coming out of this beautiful facility right here. Right, OK, just I think we can imagine what, what it must look like. But give us a sense, then, uh, of how all this... We, I mean, many of us are familiar with the idea of kit housing. You have bits, you fit them together, you can put them anywhere. That's part of what's going on. But why is that, in and of itself, environmentally advantageous? If you think about, you know, take, for example, the Formula One, or take, for example, the EV market, or, you know, the auto, the, you know, the airspace industry, what you're able to do is you're able to stimulate and you're able to design an engineer beyond what we normally see. An example of that is a brand-new F1 car. You know, they've changed all the models. It's over 45% more efficient. And that's because what they've been able to do is they've been able to manufacture it, build it in a factory, modify it, make changes, and simulate it using advanced technology to give us what is the best performance. And that's exactly what we have done. What we've done is we've taken the energy products of your home, i.e. your heating system, things like that. We've taken the construction material that makes up your home. And what we've then also done is we've included some very smart technology, akin to the kind of Alexa stuff you have, but more around sensor data and thermostat control. What we've been able to do is run simulations. We've built the Building Research Establishment Park. We've done some projects that are uh, uh, base projects as well. And this has allowed us yeah. to understand exactly what goes into a building. The outcome of that is a hyper-engineered building that's fit for purpose, not the yeah. 100-euro process we've been doing. And that is how we're getting hyper-performance. That's how we're getting hyper-control. Okay. And that's how we're making homes more intelligent. All right, just so, so the, the plan is good. What about the implementation? I mean, I've heard there are delays in getting us all through, concerns about regulation, the government working with you. Just briefly tell us what's going on. Yeah, so um, there's obviously two very different types of modular, very simply. One is big boxes that go on trucks. You may have seen them on some of the main roads. Ours, as you mentioned previously, is kit of parts. It's more inclusive. It plugs in. So what the government has been trying to adopt is how do we really bring this to market? But what the industry has said is we have got a profitable program that's worked for hundreds of years, how do we change? And people are, you know, going back and reflecting on the modular houses built in the war. That's like taking a dial-up phone and saying that your smartphone is the same. It's not the same age. It's not the same technology. And therefore, those kinds of adjustments are now in process. You know, people are starting to really understand it. They can feel it. They're like, oh, I want a smart home, or I want to pay less bills for my home, or construction companies saying, hey, we don't have materials. We can't keep putting up bricks. It needs to be efficient. Let's build it faster. Who's out there? And like Tesla and other major companies, it's, you know, it's our industry's time to maybe revolutionize. Well, Joseph, we wish you the best of luck in all that. It sounds a fascinating project. Joseph Daniel, their CEO and founder of the modular housing company, Etopia, speaking to us, in fact, from his factory in Cheshire. Coming up, it's back to school. We're going to talk about ES.